This will immediately go into the option to select the target, which I'll select as left front left tire. You can see the bone automatically will align itself. Now, at the moment we are in our view coordinates. So a view coordinate system is how the gizmo appears. What we're going to do is check out the local coordinate system here. So if I go to the local coordinate system, you'll see how my gizmo will orient with the local coordinates of the bone itself. So there you can see and, com and confirm that it is doing the right thing. Okay, let's continue this process. I'll select the front right axle and I will apply a constraint, look at and select the target and it will orient towards the uh, right tire. I'll continue with the rest. Animation constraints, look at connect it. And of course with this last bone here, constraints, look at and select the last one there also. Okay, so now I want to link up the rest of the bones to my main root bone here. And what I'll do, I'll be using my link tool up here on the left hand side. So I'm actually just going to select these bones here first and select it and drag out and connect it to my root bone. And here also I'm going to drag out and connect it to my root bone. So now that if I move this bone, the rest will move with it. Okay, so that's pretty much the bone system. So we need to hook up a skin modifier to the mesh so we can plug in our bone system to the, me the mesh itself. So let's go back to the display panel here and switch on our geometry. And if the geometry is selected, go to the modifier panel, go through the modifier list for a modifier called skin. Okay, that will now appear in our stack. So what we want to do now is we want to add some bones to this. So if you go through the fly out here, you will see where it says bones and add. So I'm going to select the add button, which will open up a dialog for me to select all the bones. So selecting the first bone, going down to the last bone and holding down shift will allow me to select all of them with the select button and this will plug them all in. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to start in the editing the envelopes. So you can see the influences in red here. So we'll just go to shaded mode so we can see what, exactly what's going on. And in this mode we can go ahead and paint weights. But for rigid geometry like this we don't have to use the paint weight tool so much. So I'm going to skip paint weights. It can be another tutorial at some other stage. And I'm going to go straight for setting this up by selecting vertices directly. So at the moment I have the root bone highlighted, if you step through it, you can see other highlights and the influences. But we'll start off the root bone first, as we want to add the rest of the body to this influence. So what I'm going to do is select vertices from the option here, switch it on. And if I go over to the viewport here and select series of vertices, I can do this in F, my wireframe mode, and just select a swath of vertices. I can grow the selection out like so and you can see what's been added to the selection. Uh, notable is my wheels and my axles are not part of the selection. My entire body though is part of the selection which is what I want. So pull up the roll up and look for something that's called the weight table and select it. So this weight table will give you the weights from 0 to 1 and the influences of each bone on that particular vertice, the vertice ID is here. What I'm going to do is change all vertices, which would be all the vertices in the scene, and change it to selected vertices. Go edit, select all, and I'm just going to scroll through this list here at the bottom until you find where it has the root bone, which is highlighted in blue and corresponds to what you have selected in our skin modifier here. So I'm just going to click the panel here and input the value 1. So what this will do is it will completely basically flood that chassis or that body of the car out with the value of 1 for that bone. Okay, so let's step through to the other bones. 
tires themselves look pretty good, but the axles need some work. So I'm going to go to my back left axle. I'm going to select one of the, the vertices here. I'm going to grow out the selection, and I'm going to repeat this process for the axle here. So looking for my selection, there you go. Just go edit, select all, and then put the value of 1, and you see it flooded out beautifully. So back right axle, grow, edit, select all, plug in the value 1, move it around to the front of the vehicle, I'm going to go to my front left axle, there it is, select the vertices, grow it out, select all again, and plug in the value for the left axle, Okay, beautiful. And finally, we're going to go over to our front right axle. Select that vertice, grow our selection, and looking for where we have the values. Front right axle here. Select all and just plug in the value one. Okay, and the edit envelopes off. We can close this window. So effectively, what we have done as we have skinned this vehicle as per requirements for export for UDK. Okay, so this is the end of this tutorial. So watch the next tutorial on the export process. Actually what I should do first is just export this, which would make sense for this tutorial. So to export, go look for export, Autodesk FBX, I'm just going to chuck it in my 500 GB. I'm going to call this Jute Race Car 01. Save. FBX version comes up. The only one to really watch out for is the smoothing groups. Just switch that on. That will ensure that all our nice smoothing is exported. Just click OK. Ignore the warnings. And that's it. Okay, thanks for watching this tutorial.